Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This week, I'm going to be looking at this itty-bitty box with a whole lot of power. It's the Wise Sense. We're going to learn how, well, this can be used for security, but also just for the general smart home. We're going to be checking that out in just a couple minutes' time. Also, we've got a new LCD writing tablet. We call it e-paper around here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the new one for 2019, which fits in your pocket and, incidentally, looks a lot better than the one from a year ago. So stick around. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid-state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's so great having you here. Nice to see Henry and Sasha. I'm Robbie, and we've got a great show planned for you this week. Uh, we're going to be looking at a uh, device from Wise that supplements your Wise Cam. Henry, yes. before we get into the show, mm -hmm. you're going to be showing us something that is rather intriguing. Rather out of this world. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Or it was. But before we jump into that, I want to remind you, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. And while you're at it, click that little bell so that you can get the notification anytime we are live or when we post brand new content. Like this. We're new! Ta-da! So, <laughs> Henry, yes? the uh, Apollo mission successfully launched to the moon. You're a little bit late on that, the but they did. 50 they years did. ago, they, plus a few weeks. They did. We're a little behind. Yeah, they did. And they did it on a, a computer that's less powerful than our cell phones and today we can actually simulate that computer on Just a Pi. Imagine, th consider that for a second. Th I'm imagining yeah. that their computers were rather significant size wise. Probably. Oh, yeah, like and this fits in my pocket. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's so amazing and all, all modern day guidance computers kind of go back to this one computer and today we can actually play around with the software that they used. We can make a virtual <laughs> machine out of that exact code that they used. And we can actually even distribute it to a Raspberry Pi. Wow. And have this giant machine and this little single board computer now. That's just mind blowing. We <laughs> can do our own missions, guys. Let's we, go to the moon. We have a link to, uh, to the uh, Apollo Guidance computer software, which you can, as Henry said, install on a Raspberry Pi. It's, it's all free. And they have all the documentation and they have the mission logs. So, like, even if you aren't into computers, just the historical aspect of it. Oh, sure. Right? It's just, yeah. See all their little flight plans. Yeah. That'd be interesting to try to. And you being a pilot, like, how does this translate to modern flight? Everything. Whenever I use a G1000, so, like, nowadays we have computer screens for our okay, aircraft yeah, and see yeah, yeah. movies. Mm -hmm. All those kind of, like, guidance programs, all those kind of herald back to this one computer. Like, wow. this one computer helped uh, with, of course, fighter jets and stuff, but eventually led to the space shuttles programs. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing what we can look at today and play around with, and especially just young kids playing around with this program. And back then, this was state of the art. This yeah. was like top notch, top secret stuff. So it's really exciting to be able to show this off on, on our home computer. And any, so neat. anyone can download it. That's so cool. Cat5.tv slash AGC to get it. Now, uh, so you've actually got it up on the screen, and I'm going to let you kind of take over. Excellent. So this is. The, uh, the Apollo Guidance computer uh, yes, website. Is. So this is where you can get the project itself for Raspberry Pi. Or, and I yes, say Raspberry sir. Pi because that is super impressive, but you it can install is. it on any computer. Yeah, and it's really amazing because it's technically open source now because, of course, NASA, they love to share their uh, old missions. But a lot of people have done really amazing things. So people have made little Apollo simulators out of it <laughs> and, even, uh, and even phone apps out of this computer. You can literally do all this on your phone nowadays. Now, before we get into the actual computer for those that are interested uh, when I go to the downloads page <clears throat> pardon me voice crack when I go to the downloads page they do have Windows Mac and everything else and of course they do have the Raspberry Pi distribution Oh, there's an actual edition for Pi and if you go Ready into to go. the little about section you can actually get the actual 
app set up. So you can actually oh. say sudo app get. Yeah. And that makes things so much easier, as you know, Robbie. Unreal. And it just, it's literally out of this world. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, part of the space buns. Oh, literally. that's cool. We kind of switched. This is, <laughs> this is so magical. You see how excited I am. Um, but no, do you want to see uh, what the astronauts saw when they went to the moon? Would love yeah. to. And played around with? Yeah. Okay. I just reach over here and hit yes, a button sir. and boom. Oh, we are back. Going to the moon. Now, this is in your browser. So what's different here? You haven't installed it on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, this so we're going to be using this version today because it's on. It's a JavaScript version. So anyone can do this without needing to code. Yeah. So again, you don't have to have any computer knowledge or basic knowledge. Yeah. Literally, you can just go online to this link, and it's just a JavaScript. So it's the exact same code. They've just painstakingly transcribed it, everything over to Java so you oh, can wow. do this. You don't even need to install anything. But with that being said, it's a lot more fun to do a Raspberry Pi project, so I recommend that <laughs> version. But today we're going to stay with this one because it's nice and simple, and I can show you a few things that I can play around with. Cool, and I will give you a link for that, cat5.tv slash agc2, the number two. Excellent, number and two. And then that way it will take you to the JavaScript version if you just want to try it out in your browser. Nice and but easy. Yeah, as Henry says, though, we can get the Raspberry Pi version. Is there a difference between the yes. Raspberry Pi version and Thank the JavaScript? Thank you so much for asking. There is. With the Raspberry Pi version and just even the Mac and Windows versions, they are a lot more mm -hmm. in-depth in the sense that you have multiple windows simulating different instruments. Right. So again, like oh. you have like your gimbals, you have all these other buttons. Here, it's really nice and simple because it's, it's all in one web page. Okay. But if you really want to get into it, if you want to like program GPIOs and your own buttons and make, make your own physical 3D make printed. Make your own spaceship. Make your own button. I don't know if you want to make <laughs> your own airplane or something. Just there you go. That is possible. So that's so Nutty. great with uh, having the wonders of the internet. Yeah. in today's modern age. I so feel like this would be the perfect science <sighs> project. Like, this would get you all the way through all oh, the sure. science it's, it's Well, ki kids, kids these days listen can, up. like, program their own apps and stuff in our days, so I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody makes up their own, like, space sim or something. That, I think Sasha has hit, like, bang on right there, though. Like, making a, make a spaceship <laughs> out of a giant cardboard fridge it. box or something. Exactly. With a flat screen TV in front with a Raspberry Pi powering everything, and it's like a, yeah. an Apollo mission simulator. Do it. Send in your videos. Oh, Who can't needs Elon? see that. <laughs> Who needs Elon Musk to go to Mars? Like, let's just do it ourselves, guys. <laughs> yeah, let's go. With exactly. a Raspberry okay. Pi. <laughs> so, it's actually been around 90 seconds, which is actually perfect timing. Oh, have we taken off? I... Almost. Um, actually, how do we do the so button So push the laptop button right laptop, there. Laptop, laptop, yeah. laptop. Transition. There you go. Okay. So what I did sneakily is that I said enable IMU. It's the top button here. IMU being? Uh, the inertial and, unit. And so oh, I was going to suggest EMU. EMU. <laughs> enable, <laughs> enable the EMU. <laughs> okay. But anyways, what that does is that it simulates it starting its gyros and stuff, and the computer's starting up. And right next to it, we have a launch checklist button, which okay. is really important. We're going to go up here for a second. And we did step number one. Whoa. <laughs> we waited. And here's something really interesting, all right? This looks like jibber-jabber, right? It says... Looks v like a license plate. V37E01E. I'm like, what the heck is that? Yeah, yeah. Now, the really interesting way that they made the Apollo flight computer work yeah. is that we see two buttons, verb and noun. Okay. All right? I'm not talking about a spelling fee. But what that means is that huh, there's 100 verbs and 100 nouns. So how it works is that there's two sections. So if you say verb 01, yeah. you get access to 100 nouns, so like 00 to 99. And each one serves a function. So for example, like um, let's go back to the computer for a sec. Yeah. If I say verb, uh, I think it's 35. And then just noun zero. So if I just press enter, it does a system check. So like all the lights light up and it's like doing all of its checks and it's doing cool things. So this is why they needed like the flight manuals. I know, that's so amazing. To, so they know the codes. You could literally run the whole mission from just just two buttons, verb and noun. It's, it's amazing. So I'm just going to say verb 36 just to clear this out. And let's let's go to the moon. Do you guys want to go to the moon? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now, it, presumably, in this exactly. state right now, are we on the platform on Earth, or are we orbiting oh, and we're, about to separate? We're, we're, we're getting. We're we've just strapped down. We're doing our little pre-flight checks. We're pushing little buttons and looking all cool. Okay. So we're um, okay. pre takeoff We're off. like radioing. Like yeah, you know, we're getting all comfy in our spacesuits. Yeah. We're just like uh, getting all nice and cozy. Waving out the window. Yeah, pretty right. much. <laughs> Sending yeah, our last everybody. tweets. You all know. Right. 
Um, but yeah, so let's do this. So it says verb 37. Okay. So let's say eh, verb 37. This would be wonderful with a touch screen. I know. And again, that's, that's why you want like a GPIO or something to make actual buttons. And noun, I think I already clicked noun, but noun 01. Oh, I see. So that's what that license plate looking thing looked like. Yeah. So there you go. Now verb is flashing. Let's go over here. Huh. So it initiates blah, 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 blah. So program, pre -launch. Okay. program should read one. So it's just going to be a few seconds and it's just getting, it's like a yeah. last check or something. The engines are warming up. Yeah, it's doing its thing. All right. So wait, it is calculator. Let's see. La, 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 la. Major mode two. So pretty much right now, they're just all be getting ready. Yeah. And pretty much after it's ready. So when it's done, we have a little button here that says launch. So when the pitch number and this little guy here, like your little vertical horizon, yeah, both of these are going to go to like 90-ish degrees. So that's simulating you like lying on the platform. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I can't do contortions not that and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, so that simulates it like being upright so the computer's ready to go. And then to make things simple, we have like the launch button that you just press launch and because NASA would help so do cool. that. So, so this yeah. so this is basically what they would have seen on the ground or in, in the in, in the capsule in, itself. In like the they'd, capsule. They'd be getting this data back from the capsule. Yeah. But this is what like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and everyone would be looking at right now yeah. on their just screen. Just a flashing thirty seven. Just just a flashing thirty seven. Neil Armstrong. It's like Buzz Aldrin number. and everyone. I'm sorry. I feel <laughs> There's so There's the third one. Yeah, the third guy and who's just else. orbiting the moon while everyone else is doing the moonwalk. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, so Mike. I don't know. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, if you're doing your own thing, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. So, we did 37. La, 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 la. Program should read. Not try again in a few seconds. So, uh, you can go through the whole process of what they went through. I could see this like being something that, hey, we're going to get together as a group and let's actually create like a simulated launch event exactly make well, it all the way to the moon now can can you fail this mission like is this a simulator know. or is this uh, just it's it's the actual like eh, one sec it's the actual like program itself so it's everything's predetermined they yeah. do have like apollo 11 apollo 13 14 um though they have those like flight plans if you want to call it okay but they don't have like the actual um i have a question i'm popping over okay yep. Question. Dramatic. Does that mean there's a major error? See? Oh, Operations error. error. I, error. I accidentally pushed a button. It's, it's telling me I'm not smart. Oh, wait. Uh. That uh, OPR means operator. Uh, operator error. Operator error. Well, it's funny because um, <laughs> V37. Wait one second. I'm just going to do it one second because I think I messed up. V37. Noun. Zero. One. Uh, pre Launch. Check. Launch. Launch. Let's find out. Go. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Cool. You need a touch screen. I know, that was Operating so this with a touchpad is really Program. rough. It, it actually is. I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? They want us to take off. Well, it's just, <laughs> I, I love it too, because like, since it's all analog, like whenever the computer thinks you have like computer activity light, light up, and they actually have that simulated as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it updates every two seconds, because that's as much as the computer then could handle. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> all right, so Henry. Yeah. Now, th it's a bit of a process to get the flight to take place. Just a little bit. You don't want to mess up. How much time would it take to, like, would you actually mm -hmm. do this for the amount of time that it took for them to get to the it's, moon? It's, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So, yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> so you're literally, you days. so really, you need to, like, like set aside the time. Yes. Sit down serious about and, it. and actually, like, get into this. Yeah. Like, Dungeons and Dragons, people will, like, oh, set up parties and stuff. Like, it. something right. like this, you could absolutely, like, hey, yes. get your flight suits ready, folks. Set up, a, yes. a like, a theater and, and actually make this happen. Could totally. be a lot of fun uh, for those who are into the, the nostalgia <laughs> hey, of old school it. stuff. <laughs> let's yeah. do it tomorrow. No. Cool stuff. So, cool beans. as I mentioned, cat5.tv slash AGC for the downloadable version. I'd like to see the version. Um, that is on the Raspberry Pi because it's yes. got some killer graphics as well. You've it got does. some 3D stuff going on. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the JavaScript version of cat5.tv slash AGC2. Henry, thank you for sharing that with us. Thanks for having me. We've got to take a really quick break. When we come back, we're going to be taking a look at Wise Sense. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We've been looking at the Wise Cam here on the show. We've had it on a couple of times because this is something that's really, really intriguing. I mean, this is a, a smart surveillance camera that's available for only $20 US. There's also a pan tilt zoom version that's just a little bit more. Oh. And it is. It's a smart camera. Let me actually switch over to my phone, and you see that that's what it looks like in the app. So, so cool. <laughs> hi. So it, it works as a surveillance camera that from the app, I can actually see what's going on from anywhere. No matter that's where I am, cool. as long as I've got an internet connection, there it is. And, and you can have as many cameras set up in the app as you like, huh. and they'll just show up just like this. Oh, there that's they are. awesome. There you Excellent. go. Excellent. We've got our full, full studio. Yeah. And this one here, I have in front of us because I wanted to be able to actually physically interact with this. Because oh, okay. today, we're not looking at the Wise Cam, but instead we're looking at something called Wise Sense. Ooh. <laughs> it's such a tiny little tiny. box. Yeah. But <laughs> so small. This is, um, this is going to blow your mind. This takes the Wise Cam to the next level and adds motion sensor tracking. Really? It adds um, door open and close or, you know, those kinds of features wow. right within this box. This was so kindly sent to us by our viewer Marshman because we can't get them here in Canada where our studio is located, uh. but they're available in the United States. And uh, now the Wise Cam itself is available in Canada, okay. but Wise Sense so far is, is not. It? Okay. Mm. So in this little tiny, tiny box, and I've got, I know I've got the camera up on the screen. I'm just going to switch over here. Um, but I have that capability so that we can show what? how, it's going, to, how yeah. it's going to operate, how we can set it up. So let's actually get into this. Oh, it's so exciting. It's just so small, too. So now, would this work on both the little one and also like the, the bigger? Pan the pan-tilt zoom? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So cool. the, this will work with either or or both. Um, but in each box, mm -hmm. so we've got, uh, this is a little key to activate it. Basically, I think you could probably get away with just using a paper clip or something else, but ah. that is uh, there. Okay. Nice. This is the, uh, the hub that is going to give you actual uh, connectivity for oh, your devices. Oh, okay. So with these sensors, and I kind of want to get the sensors out before I start talking all about them, but this mm -hmm. is how tiny these are. Ah. Wow. They're magnetized, oh. so I'm dropping them all. <laughs> awesome. They're We're jumping moving. around. Uh, so we've got a motion, uh, motion sensor here. Mm -hmm. We've got a magnet sensor here, which oh. is like a contact sensor. Let's get that unwrapped. There we are. There. So oh, okay. just like that, right? Put it on a window or a door yeah. or something. Window eh? or a door. <laughs> 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 the magnets want to grab everywhere. Um, okay, so with this little hub, Mm -hmm. What this does is it plugs into the USB on the back of your Wise Cam okay. or your Wise Cam pan. Okay. And the reason for that is if these devices were to um, use your Wi Fi, mm -hmm. we know Wi Fi traditionally drains the battery quite quickly. Oh, yeah. Well, these have just got itty bitty built in batteries. You can oh. change the battery, but it's just like a button cell battery. Okay. And they say that they'll last a year because you use the hub. Oh, and the hub okay. takes the Wi-Fi connectivity of the camera and extends it to those using like a just a, a low level, a low power consumption That's transmission. Awesome. Okay. Sneaky. Yeah. So what I'm going to do in my app, so I'm going to switch over to my phone here. And in my app, let's go back and go back. And I'm going to click on the dot, dot, dot at the top right. And we're going to add a product. There we go. So now we see there's Wise Cam, Wise Cam Pan, mm -hmm. Wise Contact Sensor, Wise Motion Sensor, Wise Bulb. And let's just plug this into the back of the camera. Oh, it perfectly fits in. Look at that. And just wait for the light to turn blue. There we go. Hey. It's flashing blue and orange. Oh, let's see if it sees it. can do a camera. All right. So now let's add a contact sensor. Refresh. Okay, so it's still connecting. There it is. So it's oh. the camera's, I've named this camera main entrance because that's where it normally sits. And s oh, now it's telling me to insert the pin to connect. <laughs> so with one of these contact sensors, I'm going to simply push that with this pin that it came with. Okay. Okay. 
bridge is connecting to the contact sensor. Hmm. I think. Maybe I didn't wait for the light to turn red. Let's try again. Okay. Oh, you got to hold it in a little longer than oh, I did. There we bold. go. Okay, and there's now like a little button blinking. on it too, yep. like a little light. All right, connection successful. Cool. There we go. Now, there we go. Give it a, a name. We're going to call this door. <laughs> Makes sense. And finish my setup. So now I see door is closed. So if I now take this and separate them. Door is open. Door is open. That is cool. <laughs> Put them together. Door is closed. Door is open. Doors closed. <laughs> so you can actually set up different events depending on the state of this particular sensor. That's so okay. cool. And then we've also got, so we've got two of those, and it came with a motion sensor as well. Oh. So the motion sensor, as well as the door sensors, can be used to trigger uh, recording on the camera, for example. Oh, okay. On any of your cameras that are connected. Remember... I mentioned how you can have multiple cameras. Yeah, they're all set up. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's so cool. you've got a door sensor on your door, and when that door opens, you can have all of the cameras that are in that room automatically start recording, for example. Right. Or you could have the sensor connected to this camera, mm -hmm. but you know that the door that is actually on camera is a part of a, a different camera's field of view. Okay. So that can be the one that you specify is the one that's going to start recording. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can get like an alert or something. It's like, hey, yes. your main door is <clears throat> yeah, open it will or something. Absolutely. So the app has uh, push notifications. That's cool. So okay. you're going to see those, um, it, and you can set that up so that if, you know, if somebody opens the door, it'll notify you. That's cool. Um, you can set your notifications how you want them to, you know, if you want it to be if the door is open, mm -hmm. closed, or uh, left open. So think of your mm -hmm. garage door. Well, True. if you leave your garage door open, you want to know about it. But you don't necessarily want to push notification every time yeah. the garage door opens and closes. But if you leave it open for more than 30 seconds or whatever you set in the app, you want to know about that. That is mm -hmm. smart. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. it. So now let's take it one step further. Oh, oh. And these devices, the Wise Sense, are now compatible as well with If This Then That. So that means uh, through some programming, you can set this up to trigger other events as well in your smart home. Wow. So when you enter a room, the motion sensor from the Wise Sense picks you up and turns on all the lights. Right. That's cool. right. Or when you open the door, it automatically turns on the lights. As just a very simple example. It's all I can think of because, you know, the smart home is so new to me. So when I get home, my smart home can start making me coffee as soon sure as I can. walk in. That's, can. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Because you've got the little <laughs> plugs that connect your, your smart home together. There you go. And whatever you plug into it, whether it's coffee or a light bulb, I mean, it's it the works. same thing as far as the smart home is concerned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can, you can have that trigger things. Awesome. So, too easy to set up. I mean, we don't even have to get verbose with our configuration, but that's no. all there is to it. Um, so this is just a, like a double-sided tape that we're going to tape on to um, like our door or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. you want to put it on. Yeah. Put it on the top of your fridge so that if somebody opens the fridge door, it will set it off. If someone opens the freezer door, it'll set it off. Oh, that's right? super smart. No more stealing sneaky. cookies or anything else from the fridge. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no more <laughs> stuff midnight snacks. This Ice is cream. <laughs> also, th this is rather an interesting um, perspective that I have because mm -hmm. these are quite obviously an FM transmitter. Yeah. Um, every time I connect or disconnect it, mm -hmm. I hear a bit of a static in my FM, oh. in my FM <laughs> that's funny. earbuds. It's like a... On, off, on, off. I feel like a superhero. <laughs> like I can sense you can the sense wise sense. The, oh so yeah. these were sent to us. But yes. But when would we be able to get them? Ourselves? That I don't know. Oh. Uh, but in America, they're readily available. But cool. the company Wise really has their focus on build their brand in the United States of America right now. That makes sense. It does make sense. And they need to be able to support it as well. And they really want to be able to support it well. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get across the border, it becomes very difficult for them to provide support. So, yeah. so I can absolutely understand mm -hmm. that. And so if you're in Canada or somewhere else in the world that is not you know, you don't have ready access to these. Make an American friend. That's, that's certainly a, a good idea. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I mean, 
they're available. They're going to be available. You're going to have af- like aftermarket sales happening on Amazon totally. and things like that. Uh, given time, uh, you'll probably pay a little bit more. These are only twenty bucks uh, for the box, wow. which comes with uh, the four pieces that you saw there, um, wow. including the hub on the back of the camera. So, nice. so every one that you buy gets another hub, and then you can connect as many more you as you want to that. So, That's just right. keep growing your network of security. Yeah. So, there's so I mean, there's the security aspect. I love the the surveillance aspect and being able to put these cameras so cheaply anywhere Mm -hmm. and they and they work very very well but they also give you push notifications Mm -hmm. they let you know if some if there's movement or something's going on they even have sound two-way communication in audio Uh, the pan tilt zoom you can control from anywhere in the world as long as you've (laughs) got an internet connection so for the price it's it's unbelievable what you're getting Um, but at the same time, like it's continuing to get better and better. Exactly. They've added AI to it. Really? So in a firmware update, it now has human detection. So it can tell whether the movement is a dog or a human. Um, <laughs> so that's tapping into AI in order to that's do that. Cool. So that's, that's a, an upgraded feature. Um, so we're seeing it evolve and, and grow. And, and it's such an exciting time as far as that tech goes. Uh, so you can get one at cat5.tv slash wise. Again, if it's not available in your area... Um, uh, do try to track it down. It's a fantastic product. Uh, I've been really, really pleased with it. And uh, I think, you know, you'll see online that people are just like, what can you do with it? So the surveillance aspect is one thing, but the smart home is now a part of it as well. Mm-hmm. So now we can start triggering things that have nothing to do with surveillance. I want to have so the light amazing. turn on when I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you I get can home, do so I things. want it to be warmer. Sure. There yeah, you know. motion sensor. I mean, if, you're, if your thermostat is not, in a position where it sees you when you walk in the door, because yeah. like a nest will do mm-hmm. that uh, and come out of eco mode, then having that trigger an if this, then that um, elem- uh, event to come out of eco mode, right. you can have it at the back door or somewhere else where the sensor can't read you normally. Right, or if there is no motion for a certain amount of time, lower the temperature. Sure, yeah. yeah. Once I'm asleep, you can turn it down. <laughs> That's yeah. right. There you go. Wow. No end to what you can do with those. So mm-hmm. uh, we'd love to hear from you, uh, your interesting projects, how you've been able to use Wise Sense and even just the Wise Cam uh, and Wise Cam Pan, indeed. And uh, let us know how you've been using those. Too cool. And thank you again to Marshman for providing us with a Wise Sense to be able to demo here today. Sasha, are you uh, ready to head over to the newsroom? I sure am. <laughs> if you're all set, let's do it. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. An Airbus A350 software bug forces the airlines to turn planes off and on again every 149 hours. Virgin's Hyperloop One company has signed a deal with the government of Saudi Arabia to build a test track for its futuristic transport concept. Yet another crowdfunded game has become an exclusive to the Epic Game Store. Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries release has been delayed to December and won't be on Steam as its backers expected. And you can run Android on Nintendo Switch and it runs entirely from your SD card. That's right, the built-in OS remains intact and you can jump back and forth between OS's by simply rebooting. These stories are coming right up, don't go anywhere. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. An Airbus A350 software bug forces the airlines to turn planes off and on again every 149 hours. Some models of the airliner still need to be hard rebooted after exactly 149 hours, despite warnings from the EU Aviation Safety Agency, or EASA, first issued two years ago. In a mandatory airworthiness directive reissued just over a week ago, EASA urged operators to turn their A350s off and on again to prevent, quote, partial or total loss of some avionic systems or functions, end quote. The revised directive, effective from July 26th, exempts only those new a350 941s which have been mo- had which had been modified had modified software preloaded on the production line for all other A350 ni- 941s operators still need to completely power the airliner down before it reaches 149 hours of continuous power on time concerningly the original directive was brought in 
brought about in 2017 by, quote, in-service events where a loss of communication occurred between some avionics systems and avionics networks, end quote. The impact of the failures ranged from redundancy loss to, quote, complete loss on a specific function hosted on common remote data concentrator and core processing input-output modules, end quote. In lay terms, this means that prior to 2017, at least some A350s flying passengers were suffering unexplained failures of potentially flight-critical digital systems. It is common for airliners to be left powered on while parked at airport gates so maintainers can carry out routine system checks between flights, especially if the aircraft is plugged into ground power. The remedy for the A350-941 problem is straightforward. Install Airbus software updates for a permanent cure or switch the aeroplane off and on again. Affected airlines are Air France, American Airlines, Delta Airlines and Lufthansa, as well as Air, Chi Air China and Taiwan's China Airlines. Hmm. Huh. Wow. So, they don't actually say what the critical failures <laughs> may be. Which. Henry, what kind of failures could you have that would lead to... Boeing's not alone anymore. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, um, no, it's... it's <clears throat> if it was more critical, they would be more pushy about it, like we saw with the 737 MAX. Yeah, so it would be like I'm, the toilet doesn't flush or something. Yeah, no, sensors, um, probably. Yeah, right? it, again, it's pro when you're talking about that kind of stuff, I'm guessing that it's pro hopefully non-critical systems. So, like, if it's just, like... Because everything's digi digital nowadays in yeah, airplanes, right? Yeah. Especially with Airbus planes, because Airbus believes the philosophy of the plane knows how to fly, well, as Boeing thinks that the pilot knows how to fly. So, in a Boeing plane, you can normally stall the plane as a pilot, but an Airbus plane, you can't, because it's all electronic, right? Like, mm. they trust the plane more. So, to hear that they have, like, such a technical issue on an Airbus plane is kind of concerning, right? Because it's just, it's more electronically controlled than a standard mm. Boeing plane, right? Mm. But again, everything's fly-by-wire nowadays. Everything's electronically controlled. So right. um, hopefully it's nothing too critical, yeah. like the flight controls or anything. But right. Well, the the other question is, how easy is, is it to turn a plane off and on? Like, is it something you could conceivably just do preemptively before any flight? Like yeah, it's, it's not that hard off. to do. But as we saw with today's earlier story, it does take time for instruments to know where they are. You have to put in your, like, exact coordinates again. And you have to do all that stuff. So, right. and, and, and in an industry right. where time is money, yeah. um, it adds time, right? So why not just you keep certain systems on? If it's a quick turnaround, then go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so don't be silly. Update your planes. Yeah, because I'm, uh, I'm thinking like you're you're talking delayed flights. If exactly. You're sitting on a tarmac having to reboot the computer mm. and go through all the pre-flight checks and everything else. Right, but there are times when the flight plane doesn't like seem to be doing anything. Now, I know that it is, but it doesn't seem to be. Like when it's getting um, de-iced through the winter, it's sitting on the tarmac and it's just being sprayed. Could you then power it off and power it back on in that moment? Technically, no. Like, the, the systems that they're talking about, it sounds like they're flight-critical systems. So going on my point from before, um, again, like the, geo, like the, the gyros and stuff, at each gate, they have the assigned like, geo-exact coordinates. Yeah. So oh. like your inertial units, you can't turn those off. Because oh, then you'd okay. have to go back and like read it and put the numbers. So like if you're in like an iced in airport where you're like sitting down there for like two or three hours, they wouldn't be able to turn it off, right? Yeah, so it's ticking away against your 149. That's that's time on the hour. Right? Now Henry, so. I've only ever flown a drone. <laughs> How do they take an Airbus and flip it over? And turn I know. <laughs> so then they just like do everything, right? And just, if you like, know, you know. <laughs> yeah, if they know, they know. Yeah. But um. So. I guess just update like the software. Just update that, your just, software. Yeah. yeah. Is no. there any cost? Like, do they like? Is what what no, what would stop them from at, updating the software? At this point, it's almost like updating your iPad, <laughs> or like Android like are they device? running Windows it's, XP? Yeah. <laughs> um, the the main issue is that in aviation, everything's so scrutinized, right? So like yeah. in the for example, right. they have to if be approved in the FAA in the states, yeah. like every single update, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and Europe's really hard about that as well. Same mm -hmm. here in Canada. Like, they have to approve each and every update by right. the um, government, whoever's running the uh, authority, right? So I, mm -hmm. I did notice that Canadian Airlines weren't on the list of the affected airlines. Does that mean we just don't have these planes? Yeah, we just don't have those models. Oh, okay. Right? So, like, um, yeah. 
For example, Not WestJet only has smaller planes, right? So yeah, yeah, we're we're safe, guys. I no just worries. wondered maybe we weren't affected because we did the update, but no, we just don't have. Yeah, we don't have those. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Virgin's Hyperloop One company has signed a deal with the government of Saudi Arabia to build a test track for its futuristic transport concept. The Hyperloop concept involves a pressurized pod with a vehicle carrying passengers or cargo up to 10 times faster than current rail. A 35-kilometer track will be built alongside a research and development facility and manufacturing plant north of Jeddah. Some remain skeptical that Hyperloop travel can become a reality. Virgin Hyperloop One said the technology could reduce a journey from Raida to Jeddah um, to 76 minutes compared with more than 10 hours currently. Oh. Wow. Hmm. The company showed off a pod traveling at over 100 kilometers an hour, or 62 miles per hour, in a 500-meter vacuum tube in Nevada in July 2017. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has been running an annual competition at his SpaceX headquarters to test the limits of the technology. This year's contest was won by an engineering team from a technical university of Munich. Afterwards, Mr. Musk tweeted the 2020 event would be run in a new 10-kilometer curved vacuum tunnel. Oh, okay. So, That's exciting. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. I know that there are people who are skeptical. I feel like fast travel is its going to be hot, right? Like Because there are so many cities, like mm -hmm. densely populated cities, and people want to get from one to the other. Mm -hmm. There's going to be so much time and attention put into this that it will be a thing that will happen in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Like by 2020. As, as no. we've seen in the past, though, I think it just comes down to with the speed, mm -hmm. if something is going to go wrong, it's going to go catastrophically wrong. Right. And I think that's the danger or the hesitation in a lot of cases mm -hmm. because it's not a small thing. It's like an airplane, like, it's like, it, it's devastating if an airplane goes down. I don't... It's devastating if one of these things crashes. Or right, but there's mm. no mode of transportation that we do that doesn't have some level of right. risk. Like, yeah, yeah, even yeah. walking in the winter. Like, you can, like, there is <laughs> in nothing... Canada. In Canada. Is, <laughs> there is no mode of transportation that can't potentially hurt you, right? So, Hyperloop, yes, because of mm. the speed, could kill you faster I that'll suppose. be fast <laughs> instant <laughs> that's that's a pro but but it's not like not a to put car. a dark spin no, on it but, but it's not like no. a car is riskless and yeah, we yeah. all drive those so we might as well cut down the time to travel from one place to another i know that there are risks but they'll be so scared of the bad press of having an injury that they're gonna prevent that as as much as they mm. can yeah, yeah i think i think we're gonna be surprised robbie because there's this huge per push of like green transportation and that's true too i know yeah. I'm, i know i'm a hypocrite because i'm a i'm like oh save the environment meanwhile i'm flying airplanes eh. but at the same time it's just like yeah it's dangerous but they might start off with like cargo first and just say hey let's yeah. let's use it for mail or yeah. just in time shipping and then they can expand to passengers from there but yeah it's like a green a uh, way to send people from Montreal to Toronto or New York, New York to in Chicago. In an unbelievably That's short amount of time. Yeah. Really, That's what's really good point with the cargo. Okay, so there are yeah. places, what are they called? Like, are they called urban deserts where there's Ooh. no food in that particular, like no fresh food in that part of the city? Mm. Yeah, could yeah. you imagine if they were just, if they had hyperloops that could just like truck in mass amounts of, and then by truck, I mean hyperloop, pod in, <laughs> pod in, pod in <laughs> like fresh produce. And, and it would happen so quickly and right. efficiently oh, that wow. it wouldn't cost anything to feed these urban centers that really rely on nothing but frozen yeah. preserved foods. Because space is an issue as well right but the thing is that they're it's expensive because like they're digging the tunnels underground but it also saves space above ground right. right so you don't have to build another highway you can actually put stuff you need there instead of a roadway mm. so that can also save space hmm. too hmm. i like this what do you guys think i'm eager to see what uh what comes of it yeah yet another crowdfunded game has become an exclusive to epic game store Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries release has been delayed to December and it won't be on Steam as backers had expected. It's becoming a familiar story as what was a crowdfunded game expected to be available everywhere has become an Epic Game Store exclusive for the next 12 months. 
That means it won't be available on Steam, despite many who have already pre-ordered it doing so with the assumption that it would be. It's hardly the first time that that's happened, though, as Epic continues to sign up as many games as possible to keep them off Steam. As frustrating as it is, the anger with which PC gamers have treated the trend has been extreme even by gamer standards. But Epic shows no sign of backing down and maintains it's the best way to establish their online store. On their blog, developer Piranha Games has said that they'll refund anyone that isn't happy about the news as long as they get in contact by September 1st. The other big news story for the game, though, is that it's been delayed from its original release date of September 10th to December 10th of this year. That said, a closed beta is now planned for November, and anyone anyone that's pre-ordered it will get automatic access to several of the final game's practice missions. That's interesting. So it almost feels like they're giving it more time. Like, okay, Epic mm. has bought it, and now they're going to put it through its paces before it's released to make sure that it's up to Epic standards. Can uh, you say that? Yeah. How many people do you think are going to be so upset about this news, though, oh, that they'll ask for a refund, right? Sure. So then yes. wouldn't that Unless take you away? want to opt into your... Uh, 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 early access, but your early access is still later than the original release date. Yeah, yeah. But then, mm. wouldn't this take away from the funding of a, like of developing it beyond from September through December when they see how many people want a refund? Yeah. Like well, if there was a mass gamer movement, funding is so tough. No. There won't be a mass gamer movement. There will be, but them? the big thing with Epic right now is that they have the money to support it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the, the main issue with Epic versus Steam is that Epic is letting the game developers get more money out of it, right? So let's mm. say if Steam charges 10% commission but when they sell a game, Epic would only like charge 5%, wow. right? So there's an inclination of, yeah, we should go to Epic. But again, Epic doesn't have all the same good features, everything else that Steam does. So a lot of gamers are angry because Epic is stealing, quote-unquote stealing, again, both sides of the argument, their games. Because there's a lot of Kickstarter games. There's a lot of these games like, uh, I think, Phoenix Point, Shenmue, all these other games that were going to be on Steam. We're marketed as being on Steam. Mm -hmm. But now Epic has paid them out. Paid them out. And now they're only going to be Epic exclusive or Epic exclusive for X amount of time. Right? So it's really sucky for the players. Right. Um, if it matters, if you like Steam or not. But it just... Can you not have both face. Steam and Epic? You can, but there's a, is, there's been a lot of controversy about Epic, though. Like, there's been a lot of, in the sense that, A, it doesn't have a lot of basic features. So, like, when you log into Steam, obviously you have the games, but there's, like, a lot of social, market, community yeah. things. Uh -huh. But with Epic Game Launcher, there's been some, like, security issues. Um, again, don't quote me on this. You can Google it yourself. But um, there's been like a lot of controversy about that, right? Because with Epic Store, they don't have a lot of infrastructure with that. But that being said, it's still a new idea, right? It's still right. a new store, which is great for the consumer, you'd think, because more competition, better pricing, right? But the issue is that Steam isn't doing anything to counteract this, right? If Steam wants to win, all they have to do is lower the commission cost of selling a game to like 5%. Oh, right. right? And the, the, the owners of Epic... Has, have actually said, look, if you lower your costs, we'll stop stealing games. <laughs> if you believe them or not, oh, that's your choice. Right. But it's, it's literally come down to that. So it's just, it's mixed feelings right now throughout the community. I'm fairly new to Steam. I only yeah. ended up getting Steam when I got my VR like, headset. Cause I VR. Needed to, yeah, so that's when I was introduced to Steam, but I don't know about... Epic at all? I don't. I, I don't know a lot about the politics between the two. I didn't. I just expected. Well, if you want to play a game, it's fun. Just play yeah. a game, right? Yeah. And like nothing says you can't enjoy Epic. Like it has plenty of positives. But again, as I'm a little bit biased, Linux, Steam, etc. I prefer Steam myself. But again, if that doesn't matter to you, if you still want to play your awesome game on a different platform, power to you. You do that, right? But. Who does, has their who does Epic run with? Like uh, Epic is run by Epic. Because <laughs> like, oh, okay. um, like there's um, what is it? There's Unity and then there's uh, what's the other game? Unreal Engine. Engine. Yeah, Epic owns Unreal Engine. Oh. So like it's the same company. So mm -hmm. it's like the same launcher. If that makes oh, sense. Oh, okay. It does mm. make sense. So it's just like I dabbled in like um, the Unreal Engine for a bit. 
it's like the same launcher. So it's just like you have your game creation engine, and then you have like your Epic Game Store, and then you have all these other things. But hmm. it's just that they're swimming in the Fortnite money right now. That's sure. That, yes. Yeah, and part of that is we don't want to give away our commission. That's the thing, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Steam, Steam isn't doing anything, but they don't really have to do anything right now because there's a lot of they still have a large user base that say we like our market, we like our everything else right mm -hmm. now, right? So yeah. mm. brand loyal. Brand loyalty. <laughs> Comment below if it affects you or how you feel about it. Um, personally, I'm I'm indifferent. Just <laughs> a store is a store. Yeah, I in install either or or both or. Well, yeah. The thing the thing I would say about it is I am on Steam and yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought to go elsewhere at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah, but if another but game says you need Epic then Game Store, then all yeah, right. Then yeah, put that in. Hey, we okay. do it anyways, right? You have Origin, Steam, good old games. Twitch. Nice, wow. all, you just have more software on your computer. That's all it there is. There you right? go. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of games, you can run Android on Nintendo Switch, and it runs entirely from your SD card. That's right. The built-in OS remains intact, and you can jump back and forth between OSs by simply rebooting. The Nintendo Switch isn't a device that we would usually associate with Android development. However, thanks to the hard work by XDA senior member Langer Haynes and... XDA Junior Member Bylaws, any hackable Nintendo Switch typically devices sold before July 2018 can now boot Lineage OS 15.1 directly from the SD card. Lineage OS 15.1 on the Nintendo Switch has basically everything you've come to expect from Lineage OS. You get all of your basic Android features, support for Google services, and even support for native NVIDIA Shield applications. That means you can play Half-Life and Portal on the go and even make use of G4 now if you're part of the beta. The Joy-Cons and Nintendo Pro Controller work without a hitch. Keyboard and mouse works when docked. Pretty much anything that can work will work. It's a spectacular port of Android and one that's well worth setting up if you have a spare SD card. Installing Android on your Nintendo Switch does not touch the main OS installed on it, so you don't need to worry about breaking anything. If you want to get started, check out the Switch Root Lineage OS 15.1 thread we've hot linked at cat5.tv slash switch switch Android. Switch Android. <laughs> Got cut off a little bit on the teleprompter, but I knew it because I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is too cool. I, Absolutely awesome. I, I like mean, it. It's uh, awesome. You feel kind of limited by what the Switch provides, mm -hmm. but it's fantastic. I mean, the kids love it, and it does everything they need it to do, but to be able to take it and turn <laughs> it into a tablet at the same time, now all of a sudden, hey, take your tablet with you, take your Switch with you. It's just all one device. That's, That's great. Perfect. I love that you can just do it with the SD card. You don't have to... Yeah. Do anything to the built-in storage. Yeah, there's yeah. no risk at all of I love breaking that. anything. You can do it. Oh, there's always risk. We'll find a way to break it. Oh, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, that's cool. Very good stuff. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Henry Bailey Brown. Thank you so much for being here with us this week. We've got to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Now, Sasha, you remember back on, let's see, I made a note, episode 557. So this is going back about a year and yeah. a bit. Uh, we looked at e-paper because yeah. we wanted to know were e-paper tablets actually a viable thing to you know, should I buy one? Should I use one? And, and we I, decided, yes. I immediately fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we all have them and we all use them now and we save a lot of trees by using them. Yeah. Um, and the company that, uh, that we were reviewing is a company called New Yes. And mm -hmm. what's really, really neat about them, what I really have l learned to love about them is that they they listen to the reviews online. They, they read oh. the reviews on Amazon and they, and they make improvements based on those reviews. So a lot of the things that we had said, mm -hmm. they 
they actually implemented into oh, wow. um, some of their newer products. That's and new, yes. so, yeah, and moving forward, they, they have since sent us a couple of extra tablets and said, look, we've implemented some of these changes. We'd like you to re-review just to be able to show people how things have progressed in the past year. So here we are. It's 2019. And you can go to cat5.tv slash ePaper in order to look at any of these devices. Now, this one is pretty neat because it's about the size of, well, smaller than a smartphone. Right. Huh. You are working in an industry where maybe you can tell the folks at home what, it's, what, okay. what limitation you have when it comes to digital note taking. I am not allowed to bring my phone with me at all into the building. Not so, allowed. Not allowed. And it makes sense because there's patient confidentiality and you sure. can't have any sort of leaked information. You, I can't disclose who's in the building in any way. Sure. Wow. So I'm not allowed to bring Let my alone phone. be tracked by your yeah. phone. Exactly. Right? So because of that, I've had to revert back to pen and paper. Right. Whereas typically I would have my phone and I would just make notes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, what's really, really neat now is here's an e-paper tablet that will fit in the same space as your phone. Yes. But is not a phone. So, <laughs> we've had the comment, well, why don't you just get a stylus for your phone? Well, in your case, that's not acceptable. I cannot, yeah. It won't, won't do it. Um, so, let's actually, you know, it's, it's not much of an unboxing, but let's actually open it and, and see what has changed here. So, the thing is with these... Um, this boasts that it will um, save up to about 100,000 sheets of paper. That's a lot of paper. <laughs> That's a lot of paper. And the device itself, here's the next thing. The device itself is recyclable. That's no. Cool. Yes. What? So, cool so think about that. Now, this is, oh, and this is just an environmental statement from the company. Um, welcome to making the world paperless. Our mission yes. is simple. Very cool. Um, I like it even better now that it, I yeah. Now that it's I already really like the concept. So this this is just pocket sized. Huh. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, it's got the stylus built in, and let's give it a try. Oh, that is nice. I don't know if you guys can see how vibrant that is. Now these are not illuminated. E-paper is not an illuminated type of tablet. It's not like your phone, but you can see that. Uh, in our lighting, it's a little bit bad. So it's like a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, let me, I'm going to jump over here to our other camera. Transition. And just, yeah, and I'm going to actually just, there, we've got some B-roll now. So this is what it looks like, and I'm just going to get right in here, and like, look at how vibrant this is. I can't write upside down <laughs> and sideways. You can do it. There you Skills. go. There. Yeah. It, it's quite a bit bright, brighter than it was. And I say bright, it's not luminant. Sasha, you're setting off the... <laughs> there oh, we go. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> it detects faces, and so it focuses on you. Uh, and then I push this button down here, and it clears. So there you go. Da -da 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 -da. This is really well, it <laughs> amazing. <that> <laughs> yeah, there you go. But you can see, I mean, it, it really does look very, very good. Um, okay, so one of the things that this pocket one lacks that I think mm -hmm. it should have, because this is going in my pocket. It's a very simple device. It's yeah. a very economical device as well. But yep. being as simple as it is, it lacks a lock switch. Oh, so you can't like right. accidentally scratch things? So you can't accidentally clear the screen. Ooh. So if I've recorded some notes. True. Right? Yeah. So I've got my notes all made out, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then I put it in my pocket and I accidentally hit that button. It's an Done. instant clear. Yeah. Uh, so you still have to be very, very careful with these ones mm -hmm. because they don't have the lock. Now, the larger one, they have the lock switch, okay. which That's I like. Nice. So you almost would want to keep something to protect it also, like, in your pocket. Like a folder. Right? So well, if you're, right? Because say, I, say I'm in with, a, with somebody and I need to make notes that I yeah. need to report to the nurse. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And then be like, oh, I cleared my oh, screen yeah, by darn. accident. Right? You wouldn't so want to put it in your back pocket where you might sit on the switch or something like that, but if I you have... I could put it maybe in my... You have it like a shirt pocket? A shirt pocket. Yeah, that would that work. work. Or, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can feel the button. It would take a little it bit of pressure to push. A, yeah, okay. So it yeah. wouldn't be a problem. Right. And it actually, you wouldn't accidentally write on it with friction in your pocket because it's, it's got like a beveled uh, what, Would it yeah. even write on? Uh, with your fingernail, with it your does. Finger, yeah. but you know, that some effort, though, so that's good. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. <laughs> the screen has improved 
a hundred times on the little one. Uh, last time we reviewed it about a year mm -hmm. ago, I wasn't too impressed with the screen on the small one. Uh, it's absolutely like that is greatly improved. So well done, New Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you check those out. If you want a pocket-sized e-paper tablet, they are at cat5.tv slash e-paper. Mm -hmm. And save some paper. Yeah, 100,000 you know sheets. This was re recycled paper. They used recycled paper. Printed on recycled paper. Good job, guys. And, up in the incidentally, still recyclable again. Just keep, just keep reusing. Keep <laughs> reusing. Um, this is Category 5 Technology TV. It's been great having you here. We are out of time, but I thank you for joining us. Thanks to these two for being here, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful week. Before we go, I'll just remind you, we are on Twitter, Category 5 TV. I'm on Twitter as at Robbie Ferguson. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube, uh, both Category 5 Technology TV and Linux Tech Show, and uh, Linux Tech Show being the one where you can just get little snippets of the show which uh, saves you having to watch the full hour if you just want the quick snippets. Cool. And uh, you can find links to all different uh, means of watching Category 5 TV uh, through our website, which is simply that, category5.tv. Thanks, everybody. See you again.